Very good. Well, welcome again to pastor class. We just prayed, but uh, we are now going to uh, to jump into uh, taking a look at Holy Week. This is something I've been doing for actually for a long time and trying to uh, understand and, and put together um, a sort of a chart from the scriptures um, that that talks about um, that talks about the Holy Week, and um, I've often, you know, we we have our traditions and we have our um, kind of when people who have come before us say everything happens, and uh, that may be the case and it may not. But we're going to take a look at Scripture and just see what we come up with, um, and we're going to allow Scripture to be our guide. And so if you have your Bible and you want to turn to Exodus 12, um, I'm going to share my screen here. And then so if you don't have a Bible in front of you, you can uh, we can pull it up. Let's see here. Share screen. Okay, I think I need to make it about like a screen. Is everybody able to see that fairly well? I saw, Ross, I saw you kind of shake your head. Is that good? Oh, okay, we're good. Okay, very good. Uh, would somebody like to read um, uh, Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 6 for us? The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Okay, so um, this is obviously uh, the the story of the Passover. Um, I think everybody's familiar with uh, with Passover, and uh, so but there's going to be dates and there's going to be sort of timeline information that we can see throughout the scriptures. Uh, so, what information do we have here? Well, there's the 10th day of this month is a timeline reference. Okay, so the 10th day of this month, and uh, which month is it? The first the month. First month. Yep, okay, so this is going to be the first month of the year for Israel. And on the 10th day of the month, uh, what are they to do? <clears throat> Take a lamb. Okay, they have to select a, a lamb, um, and then it says, uh, "Your lamb shall be without blemish. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight." <clears throat> okay, so that's kind of interesting. So, uh, ten and fourteen are kind of big days uh, for uh, for this, aren't? aren't they? They're kind of big days for uh, the Passover week. Okay, and I know you guys know this, but let's just read it again. Who wants to read verses 7 uh, through 13? Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two posts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it with head, its head with its legs and its inner parts. 
and you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything remains until the morning, you shall burn. This manner you shall eat with your bed, with your belt fast, your sandals or feet, and your staff in hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be as for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I shall the land of Egypt. Okay, very good. Uh, do we have any information in here uh, about anything going on uh, timeline-wise? Uh, they will eat the flesh night. At night? Yep, uh, I think that's kind of the the only uh, uh, the only information we have, and it says uh, I will pass through the land of Egypt that night. Um, so something's going on at night, and uh, let's let's continue. Who wants to read verses fourteen through twenty? This day shall be for you a memorial day and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven out of your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day you shall hold a holy assembly and on the seventh day, a holy assembly. No work shall be done on those days, but what everyone needs to eat, that alone may be prepared by you. And you shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread, for on this day, this very day, I brought your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statute forever. In the first month, from the 14th day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month at evening. For seven days, no leaven is to be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leavened, that person will be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a sojourner or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing unleavened. I'm sorry, you shall eat nothing leavened. In all your dwelling places, you shall eat unleavened bread. Okay, so that'd be pretty important if we made sure we got the unleavened versus leavened correct. Uh, I like that you made that correction there, Robin. That's great. Uh, uh, yeah, so we've got some information here, don't we? Uh, we've got the information on the first day. Uh, you shall remove leaven out of your houses. Um, on the first day, you shall hold a holy assembly. And on the seventh day, a holy assembly. And so no work is to be done in those days. Um, you're to observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so, uh, again, we see this first month. From the 14th day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month at evening. For seven days, no leaven is to be found in your houses. Uh, if anybody eats. Okay, so uh, we've got some good information here. Uh, we've got the 10th day. Uh, the uh, we've got the first month, the fourteenth day at evening. Uh, then it starts. Uh, it, it starts the the Passover. So we we've sort of got some information that we could mark and place into a timeline. And I just happen to have a uh, a timeline here. And so uh, if we take a look at uh, the tenth day of the month. Uh, what did we find out about uh, the, oh actually I need to start by saying this the Jewish days are different than our days in America uh, so when do we start a day when do we typically start a day uh, in America midnight. midnight midnight right and and then we go until the following midnight and so we have 
uh, most of the night and, and, uh, and then into the day. But the Jewish people, they didn't start their days at midnight. They actually started their days at the sundown. Uh, and so I placed on on this uh, sheet here, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, to uh, to 6 a.m. as the night, and I've shaded it in the dark. And then uh, and then I've got 7 a.m. Uh, through 6 p.m. here. Um, well, I guess I I probably should have 6 a.m. here as well. Uh, maybe I can insert that above. And we could have six o'clock. Um, so somewhere in there, the sun's going to rise. Now, this isn't to say that it's specifically at these these specific times, right? We know that the sun uh, rises and sets differently at different times of the year, but their day began uh, at at six p.m. or at sunset, uh, and so that's a little bit different. And so it's kind of a it's a little bit awkward when we try to. Uh, to figure out calendar stuff, uh, but we had some information. Um, we had some information that was was given to us um, in in here in Exodus chapter twelve. Uh, so this month shall be the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell so all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb. And, uh, and so we know that the 10th day of the month, uh, the first month, is, is a, a special day. Uh, so um, if we look to the Jew, let me pull up. Here we go. Here is a, uh, I just did a Google search for Jewish calendar and how the days. And so uh, the first month for the Jewish calendar is this Nisan. Uh, and so, okay, we take the, the, the Nisan and uh, we then can say that the 10th day um, of the first month is a, um, is the, is that special day, right? But do I have this, uh, may have Passover days incorrect here. I don't know. Okay, so um, let's see here. I may have, I may be off on these. Uh, I'm going to have to just get rid of those for right now. <clears throat> and we're going to say, um, well, if we just even start from the from the 10th day um, of Nisan 10. Uh, what did we see it was to happen um, on the first day of the first, mo first month? So everybody was gonna take a, oh, actually, I think that's why, I think this is supposed to go. Well, I think this is supposed to go here. So um, if this is Nissan 10 at twilight, what was supposed to happen? Sacrifice the lambs. Yeah, so um, we, we know from Exodus 12, verse uh, 16, On the first day, you shall hold a holy assembly. Uh, no, that's not it. Um, okay. So on the first month of the year, everybody's supposed to take a lamb according to their father's house. So uh, this may not have happened um, at night. Uh, it may have, they may have waited until the morning, but on Nissan 10, at some point, they're supposed to get a, a, a lamb. Uh, let's just, what was that? Verse three or four? Verse four. Okay. Uh, so we're going to just start to, to build out. And 
then there was something about four days later. Do we remember where it said four days later? No, hold it for 14 days. Okay. So now we have to keep it until the 14th day of this month. And so now if we go Nissan 10, Nissan 11, uh, Nissan 12, uh, Nissan 13, and then Nissan 14. So they're to keep it uh, until, until that day. And then at twilight, it said, they are to sacrifice it, right? Um, Kill it. Yep. So now the question is, is, and I'm not certain we know this yet, but uh, does that mean it's going to happen here? Or does that mean it's going to happen uh, basically at twilight of, of the uh, of the following day. So we're not certain about, like, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. We know that it says at twilight on the 14th day, which would be, uh, I, which I think is 6 p.m. on uh, Nissan 14. So the, according to Exodus 12, um, what verse was that? Six. Uh, six, okay. Exodus 12, six. And you guys are all going to get a copy of this uh, timeline that we we build together here. Uh, so we know that uh, the uh, lambs are to be sacrificed. Okay. Okay, so we've gotten a little bit of information. Uh, we've learned from a Jewish calendar what the first month is. And uh, we started with just looking at the days, um, the days of the calendar, putting them on here, and all we've gotten so far is Exodus on here. So this would be Nissan uh, 15, <clears throat> and these are to be uh, the holy days according to uh, according to Exodus 12. Now I'd like to move us to. Um, <clears throat> I think I'd like to move us to uh, John, the Gospel of John, or we could, I guess, start with uh, with Mark. Uh, let's go. Let's go to uh, let's go to the Gospel of John. So, if we can go to John chapter twelve. And I pulled that up here for us. So now, uh, would somebody be willing to read um, John chapter 12, verse uh, verses 1 through 8? Six days before Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at table. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, and having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you will always have with you, but you do not always have me. Okay, so we have uh, some timeline information here, don't we? What timeline information do we have? Six days before Passover. Okay, so if we look uh, to our calendar, and we said Nissan 10 was the day each house would pick a lamb. Nissan 14 was the day there to be sacrificed. Nissan 15 is the day of the Passover. Uh, so this is when the unleavened bread begins. Um, maybe I'll just put that. Yeah. Unleavened bread begins 
then um, if we just basically count backwards from Passover, so we have Passover, Passover minus one, Passover minus two, minus three, four, five, six. So six days before the Passover, uh, we have some information. Um, and uh, Jesus has come to Bethany. Hey, that'd be a good name for a church. <laughs> uh, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. So what time of day is it? Dinner time. Evening, yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's six days before the Passover. And uh, and so we don't know if it's um, if it's exactly 6 p.m. or not, but uh, they had a dinner for him. Um, and let's just see here if we can... Uh, one to eight. One to eight. And uh, what happened in John 12, one to eight? I'm putting Mary anointed yeah. him with pure nard, Jesus. Okay, it, it's an expensive ointment. Um, so now we have Jesus anointed by Mary um, in with this expensive ointment, and um, and Jesus knows what's uh, what's coming. Right? He says, <laughs> "Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial." <clears throat> um, and. And that's kind of interesting. So he's he's already talking about his burial here uh, before the Passover, which the, the disciples just didn't really understand. Um, but he he knows that this is his his death week. This is his final week. Uh, so he he is anointed with oil. Now, uh, if each house was to take a Passover lamb the next day, what do you think the people who were uh, preparing the lambs were doing the night before. Washing it. Oh yeah, right? And why would they wash it? Because <clears throat> it had to be clean. <laughs> okay, it had to be clean. And what yeah, what kind of uh what kind of lambs uh were they allowed to, to choose? Unblemished <laughs> lamb a year old. Okay, an unblemished lamb, a year old. Uh, Male. There we go. Okay. Old, I don't know, six, <laughs> seven, eight, something like that. That was on the right page. Oh, uh, so yeah, so it has to be a it has to be a lamb without blemish, <laughs> and uh, and so you would think that people are going to inspect these lambs <laughs> when they're selecting the lamb the next day. Uh, so the night before, uh, or the day before, they're going to be uh, they're going to be preparing these lambs. Uh, they're going to be preparing these uh, <clears throat> these lambs for uh, being selected. So they're going to be extra careful to to do that. So it's just it's very interesting that Jesus um, that this is the time his whole life is has been pointing to this, and now he's going to basically reveal that he is the lamb of god uh through this but okay so we have john 12 1 to 8 jesus is anointed by mary with uh with pure nard and so we would say somewhere in here uh jesus arrived in bethany uh so maybe i'll even just move this down here for simplifying it and uh, arrived Okay, so he's arrived at Bethany. Uh, he's anointed by Mary. Uh, they they throw a um, they throw a, a dinner for Jesus, and uh, and his feet are anointed. Um, we don't yet know what day of the week this is, but we may we may soon know uh, days of the week. Uh, so let's keep reading and uh, see if we have any other clues in John chapter 12. Yes, I know. 
let's keep reading and uh, and see if what other days we can uh, what other information we can find out. So who wants to read nine to eleven? <clears throat> When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. The chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to so the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. Okay, so um doesn't give us uh, any really timeline information, but it, it sort of seems to be the same amount of time because if we look at the verse 12, it says the next day. Uh, so this would, would happen, uh, this, this happened at some point um, on that, it seems to suggest that it happened the same day. Uh, now, again, the Jewish day is... 6 p.m. to to 6 p.m. right so it starts at 6 p.m. so it could have happened any time during the day um, that they would have come so I'm just going to put it uh, here so we have John 12 oops, John 12 and uh, what verses did we say that was verses 9 to 11 um, and a, a large cloud, crowd came to see uh, came to see Jesus and or really Lazarus okay <clears throat> so Jesus has arrived at Bethany he's been anointed by Mary he's had a dinner um, Okay, and then um, the crowd comes. Let's continue to read in John chapter 12 uh, what it says. Uh, who wants to read um, verses 12 through 19? The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Okay, uh, so this is pr pretty familiar. Uh, what day of the week did this happen on? The next day. Ah, right. Uh, I noticed you didn't say Sunday. <laughs> uh, why didn't you say Sunday? The scripture doesn't say Sunday. Okay, so we don't know yet from here that that was Sunday. It may be Sunday, but we don't know yet for certain. So we're going to have to just take a look and see uh, and see what the scripture t says. So I think that, Robin, that's just a great point that when one of the things that we it can be really easy to do when we're studying the scriptures is to just take the things that we already think we know and put them into the text. So we've all celebrated Palm Sunday for how many years? And we've all just said, that's the day. It was Palm Sunday. Uh, but so far in the scriptures that I've shown you, if we only had those to work with, uh, we could not say yet that it's Sunday but what day could we say it is? We could say it's five days before the Passover. Right? We could say it is uh, Nisan 10 
And the reason we can say it's Nisan 10 is because we know that six days before the Passover, uh, Jesus arrived at Bethany. He had a dinner. He was anointed with Mary, by Mary with pure nard. Uh, we know that a large crowd came to see him. Uh, that likely would have been during the day, the, the daytime at some point. It, it wasn't necessarily 10 a.m., but um, at some point there. Then um, that same large crowd, uh, it says the next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast uh, heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches and went out to meet him. And so that's the next day. Well, let's take a look. Uh, so this would be the triumphal entry. Um, and when we said that, that was John 12 verses uh, 12 to 19. Now, did it happen at 6 a.m.? I don't know. Uh, I'm just putting it on here so we can get an idea. Um, and actually, I could even just move this up here. And then we could say at some point. Uh, so we just know during the day, we have this triumphal entry. Uh, the people are, are coming to see him and, uh, and doing the... Um, and... and uh, coming out to celebrate uh, this. I mean, it's a pretty amazing celebration as well, right? Uh, Jesus finds a young donkey and sat on it. Well, guess what? That is a fulfillment of scripture. Uh, and and uh, John even uh, quotes, fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Anybody know where that comes from? Anybody have any cheater notes in your Bible uh, that tells you what, what reference that's coming from? Sometimes if you look uh, in your Bible at the bottom of your page, uh, it will tell you um, when you see scripture references like this, uh, where it's coming from. So John 12, uh, 15, it looks like if we look up Zechariah. So, nine, nine. Yep. So let's go to uh, Bible Gateway, Zechariah 9. And then we come down to Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Uh, righteous and having salvation is he humble and mounted on a donkey on a colt the foal of a donkey uh okay fascinating stuff there john quotes uh this and remember their quotations um weren't they didn't have to be word for word but you get the I idea here that he is he's taking from the prophet zechariah to basically make a point that what is going on here is what the prophets in the Old Testament had had spoken of. There's great rejoicing. They're shouting aloud, uh, and we just we see these, this prophecy being fulfilled uh, on this day. What day is it again? The next day. Right? Yeah, the next day. We don't we don't know yet, uh, but we know uh, it's the next day, and we know that up here it's it's six <laughs> days before the Passover. So now we're at five days before the Passover. Um, that, that this is going on. Okay, so let's just continue and see, uh, see if we get any more information here. So uh, who will read verses 20 through 26? Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. 
Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Very good. Okay, I didn't see any uh, timeline information in there. Did anybody else pick up anything? No. Okay, but no. we could put into our timeline if we wanted. Um, uh, we could put in um, John... Oops. John 12, uh, 20, I can't remember what the verses were, 20 to 26, and uh, some Greeks came to see Jesus. So we've got this crowd who witnessed uh, Jesus raising Lazarus that's celebrated Jesus with the triumphal, the Greeks, some of the Greeks came to see Jesus. Um, we're just getting a little bit more information. Um, and then, um, and then we don't have any more timeline information here. Um, and so I'm kind of looking for some little clues for timeline information and I'm not seeing any in John. So we may have to go elsewhere uh, because the next time John gives us a time uh, stamp is now before the feast of the Passover. Um, and so now we're at the Passover, uh, just before the feast of the Passover. We're before that. We don't really know what else has happened. John doesn't give us any more clues um, in terms of days. Um, and, and so we have to look, look elsewhere. Okay, so why don't we take a look at Matthew then, and let's see if uh, Matthew gives us any clues. Um, if we can go to Matthew 21. Okay, uh, so you can see here, it says the triumphal entry. So we might have some information there that might be helpful to us. Uh, we already know when that is. And, uh, and so let's see who will read uh, verses 1 through 11. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Okay. Uh, so Matthew gives us some more information here uh, that we can add into our um, that we can add into our timeline. Um, so I'm going to just add it. Um, and maybe move this down and I want to put here uh, Matthew 
21, 1 to 11. And this is Matthew's account of the triumphal entry. Do we get any more information uh, that's just helpful to know uh, from Matthew? Um, we see some similarities here, don't we? We see the, the, uh, the prophecy of Jesus being um, coming into the city on a, on a donkey. Um, but we get more information, don't we? So we know that he is at the Mount of Olives, uh, Beth, Beth Page, uh, at the Mount of Olives. And so they went in and uh, he sent the, the folks in to, to go get the donkey. And then he came back. So Jesus understands the prophecy. Uh, he sent now his disciples to go and get, and they bring the donkey. And, uh, and then they put their cloaks on the donkey and he sat on the cloaks. And then it even says most of the crowds uh, spread their cloaks on the road. And some cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And so uh, when we think of this triumphal entry, uh, then they're shouting. Uh, there is uh, the shouting of Hosannas. And there's also then uh, the whole city, it says, is, is stirred up. They're trying to figure out who is this? Like, what's going on here? Uh, the, who does this guy think he is? Uh, this is something that, uh, that you do if you're going to be the Messiah. Uh, so we're getting some glimpses uh, so far, but let's take a look. Um, let's take a look also at uh, Mark's account and see if we get any information there. So if we go to Mark chapter 11. Look at this. We got another thing that says the triumphal entry. Uh, so more details. Another. Um, let's take a look at uh, who will read verses one through eleven for us. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and we'll send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, why are you what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the field. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David, Hosanna, in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Okay, very good. So we have some, uh, some other information here that we didn't have in the previous one. Uh, what information maybe is new or different? Well, it mentions that it was already late at the last okay. verse. And, uh, then, and then he went into the temple. Okay, yeah, he went into the temple. Um, and so we get the sense here that that's maybe towards the end. So he, had, he entered Jerusalem, he went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, it was as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So we don't know, you know, Mark doesn't give us as much information here. Mark's a little bit more condensed. What else does Mark not give us that we saw in John and Matthew? Mark specifically doesn't mention something that was mentioned in both the other ones. 
the prophecy from Zechariah nine nine. Okay, so let's just let's just pause here for a moment. And why do you think Mark did not include the prophecy from Zechariah nine? What would maybe be some of the reasons for that? Because it wasn't germane to his audience. Ah, okay, absolutely. Uh, go ahead, Robin. Don't ask me who his audience is. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, so we're. You know, we're only looking at some of these, uh, some of these, but this is where this is one of these places where we get maybe some clues as to who his audience was. Uh, Matthew, he was trying, uh, he was trying to really reach a a more Jewish audience, and so if he's going to try and uh, and share and talk and convince a Jewish audience to follow after Jesus, he's going to have to put in uh, more of the prophecies. Uh, and so this maybe gives us a clue that maybe Mark, that his primary audience probably was not Jewish. Um, now, he certainly mentions things that if you were a Jewish person, you might pick up on anyway. and go, wait a minute, Colt, Zechariah 9, I know that one day the Messiah is coming and, and that's going to be the Messiah. Uh, but if you're not Jewish, uh, that information isn't as important to you, um, but Mark still includes some of that. And so um, it just maybe gives us a little bit of a clue there. Um, okay, very good. Anything else that, uh, that we noticed uh, in this one? Mark says uh, they drew near to Jerusalem to Bethpage and, and Bethany. Uh, so I think we, in Matthew, we just saw uh, it came to Bethphage, uh, or it might even be Bethphage. I'm not certain how to pronounce that properly. Uh, but so we know that Jesus is at the Mount of Olives. Uh, we know that it's this, these cities, these towns are in the same location, the same kind of general area. And we know today, uh, if you go to Israel, that those places are basically the, uh, right around the Mount of Olives. So all this is actually um sort of confirmed by uh by just even going to israel and saying oh yeah we're looking at a map and going yeah these places are right here and so that gives a little bit more credence to okay we sort of have a location uh these things are happening uh, it says he entered jerusalem and went into the temple so we know jesus is spending some time in the temple and after he had looked around at everything uh, it was already late. He went out to Bethany with the 12. So he goes, he's come from Bethany into Jerusalem. And then as it gets late, he goes out to Bethany with the 12. Uh, we don't really, again, have any more information, but uh, timeline stuff, but there's one more um, passage uh, because we don't just have Matthew, Mark, and John. We also have another gospel writer, um, who happens to uh, to put this stuff in here as well. So let's take a look at one more passage of scripture today. And that is, uh, we're going to go to Luke chapter 19. And uh, we're going to read 28 to 44. Okay, uh, if just a quick glance at Luke. Uh, Luke gives us some places sometimes. So at the beginning of chapter 19, he entered Jericho. He was passing through. Uh, we know that, um, uh, let's see here. Um, he just gives a parable. And then, uh, and when he had said these things, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. Um, and so this describes basically going from Jericho to Jerusalem. Uh, you can actually go and hike that trail if you want, but I'll go ahead and read this. I'm going to read all the way to, uh, to uh, 40, 44 here. Uh, so, 
And when he had said these things, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet. He sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village in front of you where you are entering, where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat uh, yet. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were, uh, those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus and throwing their cloaks on it, on the colt, they sat, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road and he was drawing near now, as he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to them, said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And when he drew near uh, and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Okay, so uh, some interesting, again, we see this triumphal entry here and uh, very similar stuff, but we get some more information here than we didn't, uh, than, we, than we received in the others. Um, who do you think uh, Luke's audience was? Again, we didn't see the, uh, the scripture reference uh, tying it back to the Old Testament prophecy. We see the story, but we don't see the prophecy here. <clears throat> that might give you a clue. His audience is the Gentiles. Yep. So, so Luke, Luke, Luke was a doctor, so he was reaching out to a different group. Yep. And Luke even mentions who his audience is at the very beginning of Luke. Do you guys remember? Uh, he was writing to a guy named Theophilus. <laughs> Does Theophilus sound like a very uh, Hebrew name? <laughs> no, it's a it's a Greek name, right? So uh, his audience is is uh, is a little bit different than Matthew's, and uh, and that's okay, that's great, and uh, but it gives us a little bit different perspective. Again, we see the the donkey, the colt. We see uh, he's drawing near to Bethphage and and Bethany, uh, the Mount of Olives. Um, and so it just it's a different perspective here. It's not that the scriptures are contradicting. It's just that we're getting, we're getting different angles of, of what took place on that day. And, uh, and we see again the cloaks and Jesus sitting on the cloaks on the colt. We see that they spread their cloaks. Uh, we see people, the whole multitude of his disciples begin to rejoice and praise God. And then we even see the Pharisees. And so Pharisees had come and they had uh, wanted to check out what all this commotion's about. And, uh, and what did they say to him? Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Why do you think they said, teacher, rebuke your disciples? Did the Pharisees know the scriptures? Sure. And so the Pharisees would have known he was claiming to be the Messiah, the king. This is very much a claim of, of Messiah, uh, Messiahship. Um, and the Pharisees recognize this. And so they say, you need to rebuke your disciples. Do you not understand they are blaspheming right now? Uh, and they may not realize it. You need to set them straight. And Jesus says, if, he, if they were silent, the very stones would cry out. Oh boy, I love it. It's setting this up uh, as we continue in the week, but it is now already past our, uh, our, our hour. And so uh, we're going to pause here for this week and we'll pick up uh, 
following the triumphal entry. Um, I think we may just pick up it. Um, actually, let me go ahead and do this one too, because uh, because this is. Um, well, no, actually, Matthew talks about this. So we'll just we'll pause at the triumphal entry. Uh, we so far uh, have some information. We have this large crowd that came to see Lazarus. Uh, we know that Lazarus was healed uh, at some point. Uh, Jesus has arrived at Bethany. He's been given a dinner. Uh, the crowd came the next day. Uh, each house, remember, had to take a, a Passover lamb in, on uh, Nissan 10. So this probably even took place uh, here. Uh, even today, when we think about um, the Passover lamb, uh, or not today, but when we think about um, back then in the Passover lamb, when it be selected, this was a very big deal. Uh, today, if you go to Israel over Passover, there are people from all over the world that come, and there's a lot of excitement, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of buzz. And what, how do you think that they would have brought in the Passover lamb? They would have done it with great joy and excitement. They may even parade their lamb and lift up their lamb to show it off. Like, hey, we got this really good unblemished lamb. And so there's this sense uh, here that Jesus is is being lifted up and, and brought in, in this triumphal entry. Uh, we saw it in all four of the gospel accounts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, all mentioned this triumphal entry. And, and this we, we saw from John occurred five days before the Passover, uh, which is Nisan 10. Whew, good stuff. So far, we don't have that much filled in yet, but we're, uh, we're on our way. And uh, I'm grateful uh, for each of you coming along this journey with me. Uh, it's kind of interesting to do this on the computer. This is actually probably easier for me to do this this way than it is if we were in person. So uh, I'm glad we're able to do this. If you guys want, you're welcome to invite anybody else to join us on other uh, Wednesdays. But my plan is that we will go through this each of the Wednesdays in this month in March. And so we will end uh, on the Wednesday of Holy Week. And, uh, and so uh, that's that's the plan uh but all right well, forward to it yeah i'm i yeah i love spreadsheets and i love the scripture and so you <laughs> put those together and i'm a happy camper uh, so all right well let me pray for us and uh and everybody have a great great week heavenly father uh, we are again so thankful for your scripture uh so thankful to come to your word and to to start to to line it up in spreadsheet uh, that we might make a little bit more sense of it, uh, that it, it might um, encourage us in our faith and help uh, help us to see how the scriptures are, are all pointing and, and directing us to the truth. And uh, Lord, while this doesn't give us a whole lot of application to take with and apply to our lives, um, Lord, we're, we're grateful uh, that this does give us another chance to examine your word and to spend time in your word and to uh, maybe get a little bit more of a glimpse into who you are and uh, and and the way you fulfill scripture and the way that you um, you revealed to the world uh, that Jesus is the Son of God that he is the Messiah the Christ and so we're we're grateful to take another look at that so uh, Lord thank you bless each of these people who are with us here today I bless those who might uh, have wanted to join but weren't able to join today. And uh, Lord, bless those who will come to, to become part of this group and take another look. Uh, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Paul. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Great, great job, buddy. Bye-bye. <laughs>